What's going on, Miami Dolphin fans? It's Mitchell Renz here from Jet Sports, and we're going to get into the latest news and rumors circulating around Miami. Now, I know a lot of people have been paying very close attention to NFL free agency, especially if the Dolphins were going to do at anything whatsoever around offensive tackle. The latest going on around the Miami Dolphins is Teron Armstead, who I would regard as the top offensive tackle left in free agency, maybe even arguably the top free agent left, has already headed on a flight down to Miami. We know that the Dolphins have massive needs still at offensive tackle, whether that's right or left tackle, considering the fact that Austin Jackson, Liam Eikenberg, and their stints last season just simply did not work out. And if you're able to go ahead and make this move, do you go ahead and do it? He's an incredible player, but a lot of injuries have started to rack up around Teron Armstead. So let me know, y'all. Down in the comments section, type S for sign, or I want you to go ahead and type P for pass. Should the Dolphins go ahead and sign Teron Armstead? For me personally, I think this is a duh, right? Like, you do not let him leave Miami. He is flying down there for a reason. He is going to cost quite a bit of money. I anticipate him getting... 17 18 million dollars per year because when he's on the field he's he's one of the best offensive tackles in the national football league and when you look at the dolphins offensive line depth chart as it stands right now kudos to you going out and getting connor williams on a two-year 14 million dollar deal i actually thought that was pretty impressive liam bikerberg out of notre dame hoping for a little bit more out of him but Austin Jackson, he needs to go ahead and step up. Let's just say, I make a video two, three, four hours from now that says the Dolphins have gone out and they have gotten Teron Armstead. This is what your offensive line could potentially look like. Now, maybe you decide to kick over Eichenberg to the right side. Maybe you decide to kick Austin Jackson over to right tackle, throw Eichenberg at right guard, or who knows. I mean, you have a few different options that you can go ahead and do with, but what I really truly believe is that Armstead is the left tackle. The other idea that you could do is make Armstead the right tackle, blindside for Tua Tonga Bailoa, and then go ahead and keep Eichenberg at left tackle. So we're going to keep on breaking down here the latest going on around Armstead. And bright and early this morning, I was on Chat Sports breaking down the top free agents still left. And we had a consensus ranking and the consensus ranking that Armstead is truly the number one guy. The fact that he's never played 16 games in a season obviously is a little bit concerning. The Dolphins have been reportedly focused on not only offensive tackle as a need, but a major focus on Armstead. Yesterday here on Dolphins Today, I broke down some of the top free agent moves that the team could go ahead and make. One of the names that I threw out there was Leo Collins. Well, Leo Collins is headed now to Cincinnati to go ahead and try to protect Joe Burrow. This is what the Miami Herald had to say on Leo Collins and Teron Armstead. According to two sources, the Dolphins stopped pursuing free agent right tackle Leo Collins the past two days because they were focusing their efforts on Armstead. Collins, who never received an offer from Miami, agreed to terms with the Cincinnati Bengals. So when I see something like that, I'm not going to lie to you. It does make me wonder if the Dolphins' plan is to try to put Armstead at right tackle. I understand he's had a lot of injury issues, and maybe he wants to still play left tackle. But if, if Miami could be like, hey, we can put you at right tackle, that's to his blind side, and we're still going to pay you like a left tackle. I think it'd be kind of a curious thing. As soon as the Dolphins make any move, and if the Dolphins go out and sign Armstead, we will keep you up to date here. That I have you promised. Also, we're getting closer and closer to 22,000 subscribers. So if you're a diehard Dolphins fan, if you find yourself looking for the latest news, rumors, all the juicy stuff, hit the subscribe button and then turn on those notifications. That way you don't miss a thing. In terms of games missed or in games played, I'm going to walk you through every single season throughout Armstead's nine-year career, and the numbers that you see in parentheses are the amount of games that he played. He played six games as a rookie, 14 in 2014, 13 in 2015, seven games in 2016, 10 games in 2017, and now from 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, this is really where he's essentially established himself as one of the premier offensive tackles in the league. He was able to play in 15 and 14 in 2019 and 2020, but then another year last season where he still missed nine games. If you can guarantee me 
that Armstead's going to go out and play 15. This is a no-brainer type of deal. I will be very curious, though, to see how his physical ends up going down. If you guys are looking for some awesome Miami gear, hey, if you want to be Mr. 305, go to chatsports.com slash dolphin sale where you can get this awesome Dolphins hat. I should mention, it's not just the gear. It's not just the shirts, the T-shirts, long sleeves, hats. It's not just that stuff. There is hundreds, and I mean hundreds of things available at this link that you see below. So before you miss your chance, Go to chatsports.com slash dolphin sale and make sure you go ahead and get started, get set up here. I promise you all there's tons of stuff. Whether you got a birthday coming up, whether you got an anniversary coming up, whether you're still looking for something for Valentine's Day, or I don't know, maybe you're doing a March Madness tournament and you need to give something away to the winner and you don't want to give money away. All great options. It's chatsports.com slash dolphin sale. Now, if you want to look at something ugly, here you go. Dolphins PFF grades last season, and this is how the, the starting offensive line finished. You had Liam Eikenberg with a 50.7 grade. That's bad. Austin Jackson, left guard, 49.9. That's worse. Michael Dieter, 60.6. Robert Hunt was actually the only guy who I would say was above average at 67.4. And then Jesse Davis at 52.5. PFF does a lot of things, and I don't always agree with a lot of the content or a lot of things that they push out, especially around the draft. However, I do like their offensive line grades quite a bit. And when you look at the worst five offensive lines going to the PFF last season, the Miami Dolphins came in at number 32. For those of you that don't know a lot about the NFL, there, there's 32 NFL teams. And not only were they in last, they were by far in the worst way in last place. In fact, they were 10 points behind or 10 grade points behind the Carolina Panthers. That's how bad the Miami Dolphins were last season. So I'll be the first to tell you, I rip on Tua, I rip on the running backs here and there. But if you can't block, you're not going to be able to win many football games here in the National Football League. So here's what PFF had to say a little bit earlier on in the offseason about the Dolphins offensive line and essentially why I'm like, if, if Armstead goes to Miami, you can't let him leave the Gardens, right? So Miami's offensive line surrendered a league-leading 235 pressures this season and recorded the worst blocking efficiency score in the NFL. The unit did this despite being well protected by a quarterback getting rid of the ball quickly and by the team running the third most RPOs in the league. The offensive line run blocking on almost one out of every five passing plays, removing the chance of being exposed and pass protection. Miami gambled that their young players would develop this season and the line would improve, but that unquestionably backfired. So be honest with me, all. Do you guys think that still... The Dolphins with Connor Williams still have the worst offensive line in the National Football League. If you're like, yes, they still do. Teron Armstead needs to stay there. And I think realistically, even if you like the Connor Williams move, which I absolutely do, you still have to go out and find some offensive tackle help because I just don't believe in Austin Jackson at this point. I still have my hopes high for Liam Eikenberg, though. I still just think he's a guard personally. So give me that Y for yes. Give me the end for no. Did the Dolphins have the worst offensive line in the NFL last year? Yes. Yes, they absolutely did. So, Mike McDaniel, Dolphin fans right now, if you made it this far in the video, I want you to share this video on social media. I want you to go ahead and share it out there. That way, the Dolphins actually see it because Armstead's going to get a hefty deal thanks to a lot of the other, we'll say, older offensive linemen that can still show that they can still end up getting it done. I mean, thank you, Trent Williams. Right? I mean, Trent Williams was the perfect example of that. 33 years old, gets a six-year, $138 million deal. Armstead's not going to get that type of change. I could see him getting like a three-year, making about $17, $18 million a year because Miami has enough money to make it happen. And if he's there, to me, it sounds like he wants to be there. So hopefully the Dolphins can come away with the top free agent offensive tackle still on the board.